Hello, welcome. In this video, we're looking at trigonometry, uh, the unit circle definition, and we're starting with radians and degrees. So we'll look at some of these problems and get a sense of what's going on. So in these problems, what we're doing is converting from radians to degrees back and forth. So a quick refresher on what's going on. Um, we're working our, towards our definition of a unit circle. So let me just draw that real quick. We have a y-axis, we have an x-axis, and then we have a unit circle, which is just a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. So the idea is we can actually think of all of our trig ratios on a graph, and they fit nicely and defined, are defined nicely around the unit circle. One way we do that is to talk about radian measure. So imagine you have some angle. Let's put our center at the origin. And let's use um, purple. Okay. So let's say we start here, right? And then how long would I have to go on the circle to so that the distance of going along the circle is the same distance as the radius? So if I took this radius and wrapped it around the circle here and started going, how far would it go? Well, the answer is about 57 degrees, so it's about here. And I'm just roughly estimating it, but maybe you can imagine that this is about one radius. So we have some angle theta, right? On the unit circle, these lengths are one and one, right? That's the radius. From this point to this point along the arc of the circle, that's what one radian looks like one rad. It's about 57 degrees and we'll, we'll calculate it exactly in a moment. Um, so that's that's the working idea. We, we count not just degrees but how many radii are we stretching around the circle to measure our turning, right? So we don't need to, to only use degrees, we can use radians. So the one of the nice things is because uh, this is not a nice ratio right here, right? One rad is 57 degrees, but what is really nice is that um, if you remember, to go all the way around the circle, let me change color now to green. If I go all the way around the circle, you might remember what the circumference of a circle is, how many radiuses it takes to wrap around a full circle. Well, how many radiuses is that? It's about six, a little more than six. It's about two pi radiuses. So it's about two pi ra radians to wrap around a full circle, that means about 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. So that's a nice working ratio. And the other nice landmark is right here, about halfway around. Let me go blue now. It's a little sloppy blue. Half of that, half of 2 pi radians is 1 pi radians. So reaching this point, 180 degrees, is pi radians. So pi rads is, uh, is 180 degrees exactly. So a lot of our formulas stem from this relationship right here that we use here. If it's pi radians, right, equals 180 degrees, you can use this proportional reasoning to solve any problem. Usually, though, we'll solve it functionally. So, for example, let's say I wanted to know here, 270 degrees. I'll show you what I mean. If we want to find 270 degrees, we can use proportional reasoning to say, okay, well, 270 divided by 180, that's one and a half. So this degree measurement is one and a half times bigger than 180. So the radian measure is one and a half times bigger. It's 1.5 pi radians. And in this way, you can use that proportional reason to solve any problem that they throw at you. But usually, uh, what I like to do, it feels a little bit faster once you recreate the formulas from this proportion, is to use some functional thinking. So the idea is, let's base it on this right here. If I divide both sides by pi, right? If I divide both sides by pi, I would get um, 180 divided by pi equals one radian. Right, 180 degrees divided by pi would equal one radian, or one rad. I just divided both sides by pi. And that means, now we take the calculator out, we can calculate exactly what that is. 180 divided by pi. 
it's about 57.3 degrees, right? This is the approximation of it. So that's where, that's how we know what one radian equals. But since this is true, we can use functional reason to solve any problem. Let's say I, I said you have 3.2 rads, right? Well, you can use the proportional reasoning here, 3.2 radians, and then realize, okay, we're just scaling up this proportion by 3.2. So you do 3.2 times 180 over pi, that's in degrees. And I said, if I was saying how many, how many uh, degrees is 3.2 radians, you would do 3.2 times 180 over pi, which is, I don't know what that is, let's see, 3.2 times 180 divided by pi, second to this button right here, little exponent button, get 183.35 degrees. So 183.35 degrees is the same as 3.2 radians. Let me get that right. Yeah, okay. Now, this part right here is the functional thinking. If you want to convert, so say we want to convert, what we did here is we went from radians and we ended up with degrees. What you can always do, the formula you'll be typically given is stemming from this relationship right here. You take your angle measure in radians and you multiply it by 180 over pi. And the way I remember this is that um, I know that in order to convert to degrees, and you'll see this in examples in a moment, often this, this will be a measure in radians, so it's going to have something in terms of pi, usually. I didn't have it here, I just had 3.2. And it will have to cancel out with this pi unit here. So I know the pi's have to cancel out. You don't need a pi, like in this one we didn't, we didn't have a pi. But the pi's will cancel out and all that's left is degrees. So I'm thinking about the units canceling essentially. And if I want to convert, if I want to convert from degrees to radians, I can go back and show it in the whole process, but I'll just say it to speed things along. Um, you take your angle measure, this time your degree angle measure. Right here, our angles are starting in, in radians, now we're in degrees. And I multiply by the reciprocal, pi over 180. And I think, well, 180, that's in degrees, it's going to cancel out with this unit, which is degrees here, whereas this was pi, it was in radians, so those radians will cancel out. And really, I'm just about canceling out the units, so my degrees are canceling out here, and it will convert what I need to convert. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at some examples. All right, so here, angle theta is in 35 degrees, and you want, so it's 35 degrees. Now I will write the units in so you can see what I'm talking about. And we know that it's a hundred. It's um, pi radians for every 180 degrees. This is our ratio right here. So when I set this up, these degrees will cancel, and what's left is a measure in radians. So we have to do 35 times pi over 180, and they want the exact measurement. So how do we do that? Probably the easiest way in a calculator, if you're doing this, leave the pi out of it. All right, we know our answer will have pi in it, but it's going to have 35 times pi over 180. So 35 divided by 180, let's simplify that as a fraction. So I just press math, and I go to the first choice, which is fraction. And I get 7 over 36. So it's going to be 7 over 36 times pi, or 7 pi over 36. And that's my answer. And you can just type the letters pi for pi. In the next one, we have 23 pi over 20 radians to degrees. So we want to cancel out the radians. So that's 180 degrees for every pi radians. So when we do the multiplication, the radians will cancel, and what's left are degrees. So we're going to do 23 pi times 180 over 20. Um, Oh, no, no. <laughs> the pi's are also going to cancel, sorry. So that's that's what I was talking about before as well. I know the pi's need to cancel. You don't need to have pi in a measurement of radians, but it's very common to have that. So it's really just going to be 23 times 180 over 20, and that ends up simplifying nicely to 207 degrees. And that makes a little bit of sense, um, even with that exact calculation. 23 over 20 is really close to a little bit over 1, I should say. All right, 20... 
No, it's not. 23 pi over 20, excuse me, is a little bit um, above 3 radians. And, right, so if I just plug that into the calculator, let me show you what I mean. 23 times uh, pi is about 70 or so. Let's see, 23 pi. It's about 72, right? If we divide that by 20, we get about 3.6. It's so about 3.6 radians. So you can infer, and remember the unit circle, pi radians, 3.14 radians is about here. So 3.6, it makes sense that it would go a little bit past that, and the angle we're measuring is above 180. It's about 200. That, that checks out. Let's keep going. Here we have 260 degrees to radians. So we want to cancel out the units degrees. So we multiply by pi radians over um, 180 degrees. So the degrees cancel, and I get 260 times pi over 180. And on the calculator, I'm just going to put in 260 divided by 180. And I go to math, and the first choice is fraction. And I get 13 over 9. So it's 13 times pi over 9. And that's the answer I get here. OK, one more. We get 257 pi radians for over 360, excuse me, to degrees. So we want to cancel out the radians. So it's 180 degrees over um, pi radians. So look what happens here. The pi's typically cancel. If there, if there is no pi here, it's OK. That won't cancel. Uh, the radians will cancel. And what's left is a measurement in degrees. So it's 257 times 180 over 360. Try that out. You should get. 128.5 degrees. So just going back here, all of this stuff comes back to our unit circle understanding that there are pi radians at 180 degrees, so therefore one radian is 180 degrees divided by pi, and um, you know in general we get these formulas from this proportion right here. And I, I left the units out of these formulas. I just want you to see that's either going to be a multipl multiplying your angle if it's starting in radians by 180 over pi. If you're starting in degrees, you multiply your angle by pi over 180. It's reciprocal. It's because it's going back and forth. Okay. So I hope this helped, and if anything's unclear, let me know. Thank you.